Feminist Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings, a hope and trust, I find you well. We have the experience of meeting one more time under the theme, the old time religion, and the sub theme for this month is celebrating love. Come with me to the book of Genesis. We begin reading at chapter 24 and we'll look at verse 62 and work our way down. The King James Version provides as follows. And Isaac came from the way of the well Laharoi, for he dwelt in the Negeb. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field in the evening, and lifted up his eyes, and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she got down from the camel. For she had said to the servant, What man is this that walks in the field to meet us? And the servant said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife. And he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we spend a moment in prayer. Let us pray, my dear friends. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege of considering your word. Some of us have suffered on account of love, and some of us are basking in it. As we go into thy word, how we pray, dear Lord, that you may show us that there are still things to celebrate in the avenues of love. Lead us gently in those corridors where some of us will not want to return. And may you even heal the scars that we have suffered on account of love through thy word. This is our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask, Amen. My good friends, as the custom is, we only raise five points. And for our devotional this morning, I want to raise that there is one thing that you can still celebrate in love and that is dwelling in the presence of God. There are men who still fear the Lord. Why do I say so? Isaac is found on his way from Lahai Roy. What was Lahai Roy? Lahai Roy is that particular well where God provided a provision for Hagar, the mother of Ishmael. Just as she was in transit, running away from her master Sarah, she comes to this place in the desert and the Lord provides a well and tells her you are with child and this child that you bear is going to be a great man. And now at that place that was called Lahai Roy, Isaac is found gravitating towards this, this place because the Lord's presence was seen and shown at that place. Secondly, Isaac is not only from this well where God has appeared before Hagar, he is also en route to the field to meditate in the evening. If ever there is still a man in your life, a woman in your life who takes time to meditate upon the word of God, I want to say, praise the Lord. This word is a well of life. It is a well of life. Spend time in God's word with your loved one and you shall have every reason to celebrate love in a godly manner. And the point number two, there are great expectations and these expectations are found when Isaac lifts up his eyes. As he lifted up his eyes, the Bible says, and he beheld the camels were coming. This was a man who was waiting for his bride to be delivered unto him. The sight of camels meant a new page in his life. The sight of camels was at least of new life, it was a breath of fresh air. And maybe I'm talking to someone who's about to turn the page in their lives and move on to the next level. Your camels are coming. That is a reason to celebrate. And even as you look back, reflect upon those times when your camels came and when you flipped to the next page. Those moments are to be relished. Those moments are to be celebrated. As Isaac lifts up his eyes and he looks upon these camels, I am reminded of that African uh, spiritual song, Afro-American spiritual song, uh, which says, good news, the chariots are coming. So glad the chariots are coming and I don't want them to leave me behind. 
these chariots were coming and the slaves, when they looked upon them, they said, I may have this one chance. I don't want this chariot to leave me behind. The chariots will definitely come for once upon a time. They did come for Elijah and he was taken up in a whirlwind and the chariots will come for those who believe in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And he says in Luke chapter 21, the verses 28, and when you begin to see these things happening, lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. When we lift up our heads, we must behold the chariots coming. When we lift up our heads, we must see the flipping of a new page to spend the life with our loved one, Jesus Christ. As we celebrate the coming of the chariots in our day-to-day -day experiences, may this remind us of the greater chariots to come. And at point number three, what else is there to celebrate? The Bible says, simultaneously as Isaac lifted up his eyes and he beheld the chariots. Rebekah, who is in the chariot, lifts up her eyes and beholds Isaac. Rebekah lifts up her eyes and beholds a human being. When Isaac lifts up his eyes, he beholds a chariot and it is enough for him to see the camels and he says, there comes my bride. When she looks up and sees this man, she then turns and inquires from the servant. I want to raise this point at number three. Have eyes for each other only. Isaac has eyes for his bride and the bride has eyes for her man. I pray for homes where eyes will be fixated on our loved ones only. The marriage institution, affairs are suffering and they are teetering and tottering. Why? Because eyes are being set on third parties. Do not do so, my dear friend. Keep your eyes for that one person. May you behold your Isaac. And Isaac, may you behold your Rebecca and seek to behold no other. And at point number four, the first meeting. Now Rebecca inquires, what man is this that walks the field to meet us? Do you remember the day you met your loved one for the first time? These are moments to celebrate. And if ever you are here to meet your loved one, I want you to draw a few points from this. Notice Rebecca looks upon Isaac, who is walking across the field to meet them. I want to encourage you, if you do not possess a field, reconsider falling in love. If you have no potential to take care and tend to a field, think twice before falling in love. Reconsider your pathways. As we are celebrating Valentine's, you may want to be thinking about, do you possess a field? Do you possess room to make any productive living and take care of your family. Isaac had this figured out. Isaac already had this in place. He had a good space with the Lord. He had a good physical space wherein to take care of his wife. It was in the Negeb towards the well Lahiroi. And at point number five. On this one, I want you to lend me your ears and your eyes too. Notice when Rebecca has inquired from the servant who is unnamed in this passage, but I believe it must have been Eliezer. She requires, who is this man who comes out to meet us? And the man responds, this is my master. It is my master. The Bible says she got down from the camel and covered herself. And covered herself. For emphasis, and covered herself. Many of us, we meet women who are already uncovered. They go through the streets, they are uncovered. But a woman of modesty would cover herself for her loved one. A woman of modesty would cover herself to make sure that when she walks in, there is something to be uncovered. For some have been uncovered literally and figuratively. I use adult language here. Are things still covered where you are? I challenge you as we celebrate love, should we get to the matrimonial bed and we discover that all has been uncovered, there shall be less to celebrate. May we find reason to celebrate covered things. May you be covered in your adornment. May you be covered physically and above all, may you be covered spiritually. May the Lord cover you in his messes, cover you in his protection. May he cover your relations May he cover your affairs. 
May he cover your marriages. May the Lord cover you. I want to pray for the relationships that we're in as we celebrate the month of love, that the Lord will cover us. A moment to pray. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with us all. May the Lord, who is the God of love, walk ahead of us. May he domicile and reside in our affairs. May he touch our speech. May he influence our conduct. And above all, may he prosper our relationships, affairs, and families. As we celebrate love, we want to celebrate the love that we have with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This has been our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask, Amen.